what if you're currently saving or thinking about saving a property deposit? I'm often asked, what is the best way to save a property deposit and what's the best way to invest a property deposit until you have enough to buy your first home? I'm Connell Canary from What If Advice and in this video I'm going to show you the where and the how to get a 15% return on your property deposit savings. That's a lot. A 15% return sounds too good to be true and you know what they say, if something is too good to be true it often is uh, or illegal. Don't worry, I promise this is completely legal. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's legal. There is a small amount of money laundering through your superannuation, but hey, if the government says it's legal, it's legal. In this video, I'm explaining the First Home Saver Scheme, which is a government initiative to help you save for your first home. And I think it's a pretty awesome way to save a property deposit. Um, it is a smidge complex, so I'll do my best to explain it simply in this video. However, to get your strategy just right, make sure you do your own homework, uh, make sure the rules haven't changed, talk to me or talk to a financial advisor to make sure you're getting the maximum benefit you can. Here's the general advice warning and let's talk property deposits. Okay, so what is the first home saver scheme? Um, it's a story about tax. When you get paid uh, income from your employer, the tax you pay is called your marginal tax rate. The more you make, the more tax you pay, and this can go up to 45%. To make things easier, in this video, I'm just gonna use an average income tax rate of 30%. Will change from person to person. Now, your superannuation. Super is a low tax zone that we use for retirement savings. The government says, we're gonna make everyone save a bit of their income for their own retirement, and you generally can't touch it until you retire. However, in return, we're gonna give you a really great tax rate, which is 15% while you're working and 0% in retirement. So, what's the point and how does this help you with your property deposit? The first home saver scheme doesn't allow you to dip into your super. It allows you to add extra money to super and dip into that low tax zone. So instead of paying 30% income tax, you can pay 15% tax inside super and bingo bango, you've made 15% on your money. There is a little bit more to it than that and I wish the maths was that simple, but conceptually, if you were gonna take one thing from that, this video, it's that. It's adding extra money into super and the, the profit that you're making, the saving you're making is that tax difference. Okay, so how does the scheme work? There are six simple steps. Step one, plan and prepare. Step two, add money to super. Step three, continue to add money to super without going over the limits. Step four, withdraw your money from super while considering the limits. Step five, use your money to purchase a property. And step six, rub your hands together and laugh while you enjoy that free money. Next, I'll go over these steps in a bit more detail and finish up with some common questions that you will no doubt have. Step one, plan and prepare. Once you have a basic understanding of this strategy and before you start contributing, um, it's best that you do some planning and preparation. However, it is easier for me to explain this once I explain the strategy, so I'm gonna come back to step one. Step two, add money to super. The most common way you can add extra money to super is something called salary sacrificing. This is where your employer will withhold some of your income and add it to your super. As this is pre-tax, you can think of it like a instant tax deduction. As I was saying, when it goes into super, you'll pay 15% tax rather than your usual tax rate. Now, some employers don't always allow you to do salary sacrificing, or depending on your situation or your strategy, this may not work for you. You can also make personal contributions to super. In this case, you would be contributing post-tax. You can still get the same tax deduction. However, there's a form you've got to fill out and you won't get that benefit until you've done your tax return. Step three, continue to add money to super without going over the limits. When adding money to super, there are two limits or caps that you need to be aware of. 
The first one is the pre-tax limit. Like if you're making $60,000 per year, you can't just add all of that money into super and not pay any income tax. So there is a $25,000 per year per person cap on pre-tax contributions, which I know is a bit of a mouthful. Be aware the money your employer is currently putting into super makes up part of this limit. So let's say you're on $70,000 per year and your employer is adding $6,650 to super each year. That means you would have about $18,000 left that you could contribute pre-tax. If you aren't claiming a tax deduction and adding money into super, the limit is $100,000 per person per year, and this is called a non-concessional contribution. Step four, withdrawing your money from super, again, while considering the limits. Fast forward two years, and let's say you've contributed $20,000 into your super, and you're ready to withdraw it. Uh, how do you do it, and how much do you get? First thing you need to do is go to the ATO via your MyGov account and apply for something called a determination. This is the ATO determining how much money you can get back out. The ATO determination is calculated like this. Money contributed plus investment earnings minus withdrawal tax. Money contributed, so like the $20,000 we were just talking about, is based on after you've paid that 15% tax. So this number will be $17,000. For your investment earnings, the ATO won't look at what your super has actually made on the share market. Instead, it will give everyone the same rate of return. This is based on something called the shortfall interest charge, or SIC, uh, which is currently at 3.1%. And I'll put a link below for you to see what the current rate is depending on when you're watching this video. In this example, I'm just gonna use a flat $1,000 uh, for investment earnings. If you're trying to work this number out for yourself, uh, have a play with a compound interest calculator and the rate of return and how much you're contributing, time, etc. cetera, um, and you should be able to get a pretty good guide. And minusing withdrawal tax. Uh, and I think this is one of the most complicated elements. You also get taxed when you take the money out, sort of. When you take your property deposit out of super, you are charged your regular marginal tax rate minus 30%. Let's say you have a 34.5% marginal tax rate. They'd take the 30% off that and they'd charge you 4.5% tax on the withdrawal amount. So in this case, that would be $810, giving you a total withdrawal determination of $17,190. Once you have your determination, you can then send that to your superannuation company to withdraw the money, allow ballpark four weeks to receive those funds. Last quick comment about withdrawing money. You have limits on the withdrawal as well. If you do this strategy over a one year period, you can take out $15,000 per person. If you did this strategy over a two year period or more, you would have a limit of $30,000 per person you know, if you're in a couple, that could be $60,000 over a number of years. Step five, use your money to go and purchase a property. Great. You've saved a bunch of money and you're ready to go shopping. The most important thing here is timing. So you've got your determination and you've got your withdrawal. You cannot sign your property contract before your determination. It's best if you do your property contract after your withdrawal. Technically, you can sign your property contract between the two of those. However, if you do, you've got a 14 day period to then apply for that withdrawal. And step six, rub your hands together and laugh while enjoying that free money. So I think uh, this is a good time to do a bit of a quick comparison. We just saw that $20,000 turned into $17,190 after tax using this scheme. That same person with the exact same tax rate not using the scheme would have been paid $13,100 in their pocket after tax. That's $4,000 of free, free money. Now, the benefit will change from individual to individual based on a few factors. Short version is uh, the more you contribute without going over your limits, the better result you're going to have. And that's the six basic steps to a larger property deposit. However, I skipped over step one, so let's go back. Step one, plan and prepare. You need to create a plan uh, before you start to make sure that you get the maximum benefit, or if you don't 
stuff it up along the way. Um, so here are a few things you need to consider or do. Um, I'm going to run them through them pretty quickly. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link below to the full list and you can work through them in your own time and as you go through the process. You need to check that your nominated super fund is participating in the scheme. Ask your fund about any fees, charges or insurance implications. Check that your details match the between your super fund and the ATO. If you were planning to sort out your superannuation, like consolidate them all into one, now is a really good time to do that before you start. Do a loss super search to see you know, if you do have any funds or if you're unsure what super funds you have. Work out how much you're able to contribute to super based off your employer's contributions currently and then minus off the $25,000. Work out your personal budget to confirm how much you can save. Remembering that what you can save each week in your pocket isn't necessarily the amount you're going to tell your boss to contribute to super because you're currently saving after tax. You need to work it out pre-tax. Um, use maybe paycalculator.com.au to help you do this maths or again, talk to somebody else. You need to create a way for you to track your contributions to super. Record the amount, the type, the date, you know, of those extra contributions Make sure you're aware of the current rules around the first home saver scheme. And if this all sounds too hard and you're worried you're going to stuff it up, uh, talk to me or your friendly neighborhood financial advisor. Now, that's the six steps to a larger property deposit. However, you probably still have some questions. So here are some common ones that I get. Am I eligible? You need to be over 18 to make a withdrawal, but technically you could start contributing earlier than that and you must be buying your first home. So you can't have had an investment property before or a block of land, nada. Does this have any impact on my HEX or HELP debt? Great question. There is a clause that says uh, when you're withdrawing money, anything that's owed to the Commonwealth, the tax office will withhold before giving it to you. So if you have an outstanding tax bill, if you are child support, um, they will take this before releasing the funds to you. Um, however, your HEX or HELP debt is not one of these things. It's not in that kind of category. So you do not have to pay off your HEX before you can do this scheme. Um, so generally speaking, your HEX is not uh, an issue. How can I check my balance and how much I can withdraw? Your super fund won't be the most accurate place to check. Keep in mind that your employer may not pay your super weekly or fortnightly. Even if you get weekly or fortnightly pay slips, often employers won't pay super um, uh, until the end of each quarter. So that's something you should keep in mind for your strategy. The best thing to do is keep a record of your contributions, including the date, amount, type. This will help you keep track and you will actually be asked this information when you request a determination. For an official and exact amount available for withdrawal that considers everything, including the interest that you've earned, uh, any extra tax that you might need to pay, the, so the way you actually do it is apply for determination with the ATO via your MyGov portal. Do I get to select which investment option my contributions are invested in? Yes, your money will go into super and invested with whatever involves investment option you've chosen. However, remember I said how much money you can take out isn't based on investment gains or losses of the share market, which is true. Although you should still consider how your money is being invested and consider if you need a lower risk option, especially if you're with a, or if you have a low super balance. Can I only make one withdrawal? Yes, only once. How long do I have to buy a property? Once you've made a withdrawal, you have 12 months to sign a contract. Settlement and your move-in date could be later, but the contract date must be within 12 months. How long do I need to live in the property? You need to live in the property for six months within the first 12. So let's say your property has a tenant in it when you purchase it. You want to make sure that that tenancy agreement ends within the first six months so you're able to move in. What if I don't spend the money on the property once I withdraw it? You have a few options. You can put the money back into super or you can keep it outside super. However, you will get charged a first home saver scheme tax. This is a flat rate of 20% um, and that's an additional tax 
And that's effectively the government asking for that free money back. Can I get an extension? You can submit a request to the ATO to extend this 12 month period to a 24 month period if required. So that's it, that's the basics around the first home saver scheme. I know there is a bit of a lot and it can seem like a bit of a, um, a complex journey. However, I do think the juice is worth the squeeze. For more information, uh, I'll leave a link down below to some of the information that we've got on our website. Um, you can talk to me or a financial advisor to get more information. The ATO does have a pretty good page on their webpage um, for extra information, but also check out the ATO community pages where people will ask questions and the ATO actually respond with answers. I found that um, as a, it's a pretty good resource. Uh, and also here are some other videos from our channel. Please check those out. Please subscribe. Uh, and until next time, Talk to you soon.